Hello friends, welcome back. Today, we are going to look at endpoints, which is one of the functional components of WSO2's Enterprise Integrator. And specifically, we'll be looking at address endpoints, which are the basic ones. Let's get started. I'm at the integration studio now. To explain address endpoints, I'm going to define a new project and then uh, create a small API and then we'll configure the address endpoints to invoke a backend service. Uh, let's see how to do that. So to start with, I'm going to create a Maven multi-module project by right-clicking uh, on the Project Explorer side and then click on Other and then select Maven multi-module project. Um, I'm going to give this project a name sample 5 and then I'm just clicking on Finish. So this completes the Maven multi-module project creation. Once that is created, I'm going to create an ESB project. So I'm clicking on Sample 5 project, right click, new, and then ESB config project. I'm going to select new ESB config project. And then the project name I'm going to give a sample 5 underscore ESB. Uh, if you uh, have been watching my uh, tutorial series on WSO2, uh, you might have observed that I'm, I'm just uh, giving or uh, rather I'm following the same naming convention. Uh, click on next. And then here we need to link the ESB project with the parent. So the parent project is the Maven multi-module project. I'm linking to sample five and then click on finish. Once this is done, we can go ahead and create the API. So go traverse through the folder structure and click on the API, right click and then click on new, click on arrest API. I'm going to use the default option, create a new API artifact, click on next and then here's the name. I'm going to give sample 5 API as the name of uh, the API and I'm going to give it the same context. So sample 5 API is going to be my context. I'm leaving the version to default value, click, click on finish and then we have our API created. Now this is going to be a very simple API. I won't be do doing any transformation inside the API. Uh, so basically what I'll do is when I get a request, I'll just pass the same request. Rather, I'll proxy the same request to a backend endpoint and then get the response and send it back to the service invoker. Um, so the, the focus here is to configure the address endpoints. Now, there are two ways to configure an endpoint. Um, if you look at the folder structures here, you can see endpoint as one of, one of the folders. You can right click here and then click on new, click on endpoint, uh, select the default option, create a new endpoint. And then here you have to give the endpoint name. So I'm gonna give address endpoint, so addrep as the name of my address endpoint and then under the endpoint type option, you can find different endpoint types. So for now, we are discussing the address endpoint. So I'm selecting that and that's a default on default one too. And then when it uh, comes to the endpoint configuration section, under the address tab, I'm going to give HTTP, HTTP bin.org slash get. Uh, it's a free endpoint available uh, into internet. Uh, basically what it does is, whatever request you send to this endpoint, it just echoes it back. So just to demonstrate our address endpoint, I'm going to use this, click on finish, and then this creates an endpoint for you. Our endpoint is created uh, in the form structure or rather in the form view, uh, you can uh, see the, the values inside the ad address endpoint configuration. If you go to the source section, um, you can see the XML representation of the endpoint. So as I mentioned before, there are two ways to configure endpoints. This is the first way. Now I'll show you the second one. Uh, when you come back to the main console, you can see a tab called endpoints here. And then you can see address endpoint here as well. So you can just drag an address endpoint here and have the configurations done here directly. Or as, we, as I demonstrated earlier, you can go to the endpoints folder and then create an endpoint there. So endpoints created by that method will appear here under the define endpoint section. You can see the ADDREP that we created some time back. 
Now, to invoke a backend endpoint, I'm going to use a send mediator. So I'm just dragging the send mediator here. Um, dragging it again. Yeah, I'm going to um, use a send mediator. Now, we have to drag the endpoint to the set inside this box, which is under the send mediator. I'm going to use ADDR EP endpoint, which we uh, defined in the first uh, using the first method. There is a definite advantage for this. Uh, the reason being, when you, when, when you define an endpoint like this, yeah, you can reuse this. Whereas if you're going and directly dragging this address endpoint directly uh, to your uh, integration flow, that cannot be reused. So if I have another API, then I can pretty much copy this endpoint and then use it there. So that's the advantage of uh, creating an endpoint separately and then using it in the flows. So I prefer this method. Now in sequence flow is completed um, because we are not going to do much. Just get the request and pass it uh, to the backend endpoint. And now to handle the response, I'm going to drag a send mediator and put it in the out sequence. So this completes our flow. Uh, our API is ready. Endpoint um, configuration is ready. Let's save it. The next task is to create a car file to deploy. As you know, car file is the deployment artifact in WSO2's enterprise uh, integrator. So for that, I'm clicking on new and go to other, and then I'm going to select the composite application project. Click on composite application project and select sample5 underscore ESB. I'm going to name the car file as sample5 underscore car. And click on next. Now here you need to select uh, the parent. Uh, so sample five is going to be the parent. Uh, so this is actually um, this when when we actually select the parent or rather link the projects to the parent. This actually helps us when you build with Maven or uh, any other tools like that. Click on finish to complete the car file. Now the car file is ready and we can go ahead and deploy. So to deploy this flow, I have a local instance of WSO2 EI running. And uh, as you can see the status, it is running. So I'm just right clicking on the server instance and clicking the option add and remove. When you click on that option, the available car files will uh, appear. Yeah, this shows that I have a sample five car file. I'm just selecting it. You can either select and then add or just double click it so that it's moved to this side. Clicking on finish to complete the deployment. Uh, you can wait for the messages here. Yeah, so this indicates that the car file is successfully deployed. Now I'm going to uh, the admin console to get the URL of the API. I'm at the ad admin console now. I'm logging and using the default credentials admin and admin. If you click on the API section, you can find new API that we have uh, deployed. So that's going to be sample 5 API. I'm just selecting the endpoint. I'm opening a new tab. Yeah, I'm pasting the URL there and then I'm invoking the API. Yeah, so as you can see, now we got a response and this response is from http bin.org slash get. So when you get this response, this indicates that you've actually invoked the sample 5 API and then uh, using the address endpoint, we invoked a backend API and this is the response that we got. I hope you have enjoyed and understood how to create address endpoints in WSO2. If you have any queries, please leave them in the comment section. And if you like the contents being published in this channel, please go ahead and subscribe the channel so that the new contents that I publish here will reach you as a notification. Thank you so much for watching. Happy learning and have a wonderful day.